Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabbi ajmain. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening everyone. I am Puan Fazilah binti Dahman. I am an English language teacher at Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Derma which happens to be my alma mater as well. I've been teaching for 36 years. This is my 36 year of teaching. I taught in Kelantan for one year, 32 years in Melaka, and this is my second year back in my hometown, Perlis. I'm here today to revise. Uh, our lesson today is a revision on uh, directed writing. I know your teachers have taught you directed writing, Uh, the many ways to answer and let's take today as one of the other ways how to answer directed writing okay let's start everyone welcome to the online tuition program perlis mengaji this is brought by education department and state government and islamic religious affairs department thank you to them SPM 2020 English 1119 stroke 1 Session A directed writing 45 minutes 35 marks I know you know that very well Format is either 2 or 3 marks depending on the question the content would be 12 or 13 marks again depending on the question the language is always 20 marks and that brings to the total marks 35 marks what is directed writing it is a task based on a situation described in detail in words or diagrams that's what cambridge revision guide says the candidate is guided on what to write how to set out the answer it is also to test students ability in reading skills to read and understand the question writing skills to use the information given to display an understanding of the task to generate ideas to use clear and accurate standard english to use an appropriate style and tone what are students expected to do write sentences using the correct syntax and grammar produce a variety of sentence structures in terms of length and type use appropriate vocabulary It must be wide and used with precision. Use accurate spelling and punctuation. Write in paragraphs and they must have unity and cohesion. Use the correct style that is format and tone. I've mentioned the word tone twice because this is always what some students seem to forget. Okay? You cannot forget the tone because how you speak to your parents, of course, it is not the same as how you speak to your little brother and that is what i meant by tone now when you read the question you should be able to identify these are the things you must identify the moment you read the question that would be the first one is the format this is where you get the format the moment you read the instruction given write a letter a report a speech all those things Okay. The next one is the audience. You must identify the audience. Who are the people who will read your composition or text or who are the people who will listen to your speech and talk? Next, you must identify the contents, the points that must be used to get marks for the content. Remember, 12 or 13, all right? Okay. Then The next one is that you should be able to identify the task. What is the task? This is the purpose of the writing. Whether you are going to complain, whether you are going to give opinion, whether you are going to share information, that is what we call the task. And next comes the tense. The correct tenses must be used for language accuracy. And the last one is the scenario or subject matter. What is this? This is the information that you cannot change. We will go deeper later on. 
So, remember F A C T S format, audience, contents, task, tense and scenario or subject matter. F A C T S. Directed writing requires you to wear many hats. You must have sufficient background information as sometimes you have to become a doctor, motivator, president or chairman of an association or society, counsellor, writer, head prefect, etc. etc. You have to imagine to be someone else. This is to set the right tone and also the subject matter. Types of directed writing questions, I know you know this very well. The first one is formal letter, the second one is informal letter, then you have article followed by the report and then you have the speech and you have the talk. Only this? No. There are also interview, book review, process and procedure and also minutes of meeting. But one, two, three, four, five, six are the only types of questions that have been asked in the SPM, quest, SPM exam. Uh, from year 2000 until 2019. Okay, let's go to the formal letter, the format. Of course, the first one is address of sender, followed by address of receiver, then you have the date, then you put the salutation, and then followed by the reference, okay, and the last one is the ending. There's a letter over there. Okay. This is an example. The Agricultural Club, Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Saujana, 75450 Ayakroh Melaka. Put your signature, put your name in all upper cases and write who you are. Usually the person who writes a letter is the secretary. This is another example. Right? This is when you want to complain. 38 Jalan Indah 2 Taman Indah. 10100 Kanga Prolis. You are writing to the director, the Department of Environment, and second floor KWSP building, Jalan Bukit Lagi, Kanga Prolis. Put the date there, 18 March. Dear sir, that's the solicitation. Uncollected rubbish along the road leading to Taman Indah. The first paragraph is the most appropriate one for you. You just remember, on behalf of the residents of Taman Indah, I would like to draw your attention to the above matter which has affected our housing area. Then put all the contents there, sign it, yours faithfully, put your signature, put your name again, and this is, you are the Secretary of Residence Association. Done. Informal letter. The format is, of course, the first one, address of sender and date. They come together. Then the next one is the salutation and the ending. There. There's another letter over there. Okay. Here comes the example. You put the address there, okay, and the date. Don't forget that. And the salutation, dear Nuru, okay. And you put the contents in between and you add it. Yours sincerely, you put your signature. No need to put your name because this is an informal letter where it is supposed to be that it is written from someone to someone who knows each other. But sadly to say that youngsters these days do not write letters because you are born in the era where you have WhatsApp messages, Twitter and all those ICT things. Okay? Alright. Now, the next one is the article. Okay? The format is the first one is that you have to write the title and followed by name of writer that's who you are okay here's the example healthy living tips for teenagers that's f1 by nurul fatiha binti aziz f2 then put all the contents next one report the first one the format is name and post of receiver post is mandatory okay. reference name and post writer right here comes the example of a report okay. to Puan Fatima binti Ahmad the principal ah that's the post mandatory okay sekolah menengah kebangsaan bandar baru 
4300 Bangi Selangor. Okay, and then you write the reference. Collapse of ceiling in the library. Okay, and you put the contents. You're going to tell everything including the date that it happened. And then reported by, put your signature again. And put your name there, Hanis Binti Aziz. And who you are? Head library. Okay? Okay, now let's go to the next one. Speech and talk. Format number one is the greetings. Okay. Number two, you introduce the title, yourself, and the purpose of the speech or talk. Number three is the closing. One, two, three. This is the example for a speech where usually the question says that you are the president of the chess club, you are the head prefect, okay? uh, you are a student giving a speech during assembly. So you start by saying a very good morning a bit to the principal, senior assistants, teachers and friends. Okay? In conjunction with IT Week, I would like to give a speech entitled The Internet Has Changed the World. Okay, that's F2. Then you have the contents. Okay, and you're going to end it by saying, Thank you for lending me your ears. I hope everyone has gained some benefits from my speech. Okay, now, this is the example for a talk. A talk is usually given by someone with authority. That is why sometimes you have doctors who came to your school to give a talk about uh, health. Okay? Alright, so usually you can start by saying a very good morning a bit to the principal, senior assistants, teachers and students of Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Sri Iskandar or whatever school you want to put. Okay? That's F1. Then introduce yourself. I'm Dr. Johara from Damai Hospital. I would like to thank the school for inviting me to give a talk in conjunction with Health Week. Today, I would like to share some thoughts on health problems among teenagers. And then you have the contents, and then you end it by thank you for listening. I hope you have gained some knowledge from my talk. You notice that in the speech, the person did not introduce himself. Because like I said, the questions, uh, if the question says that you are the head prefect, of course everybody knows you. So you don't have to introduce yourself there. It's okay. Okay? Alright, now, let's go. Here comes the reminder. When the question requires you to add some new points or own ideas, you must think of them before you start writing, not after you have finished elaborating the given points. Why? There's a big why there. Okay. Ah, this is to avoid using the elaborations of the previous points as a new one. Restructuring the given points by using different words or phrases. Losing the coherence, that is the connection, from the previous points. So that is why you have to think of the new points and the elaborations before you start writing. That is how it should be done. Reminder. Elaborate all the points. Add your own ideas do not write more than three or four sentences for each point. This is because the more you write, the more language mistakes you make, the lesser mark you will get. But you can write more if you are very proficient. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. But remember, you have only 45 minutes. So if you were to write lengthy elaborations, unnecessary elaborations, you might not be having the enough time to write all the points given. Okay? Alright. And But there are some points that need no elaboration, such as uh, somebody's name, the age, or the school. What is there to elaborate on somebody's name? Maybe you're going to say what is their nickname. That is all. Okay? Alright. Again, another reminder. Do not change the sequence of the given points because you will lose the coherence or miss some of the points. This is very dangerous. Okay? Highlight or underline the points to remind yourself that you have attempted them. 
Okay? If you miss one of the points, one mark gone. One mark is very, very precious in the exam. Okay. Now, I come to this part where I am going to share with you how to elaborate or to give own ideas. I'm not very sure how you have been elaborating the points before this, but here are some suggestions on how to elaborate and to give your own ideas. Okay, let's start. The first one is give examples. So this is the way you write it. For example, for a comma there, we can recycle plastic bottles and use them to decorate our homes. We just have to be a bit creative and they will look attractive. Sometimes we can even sell our products and gain extra pocket money. That is number one, give examples. Number two, give suggestions. I would like to suggest an interesting activity for this campaign. That is treasure hunt. We can do this in the school compound or at the park. Inviting students from the nearby schools would be a great idea. Give suggestions. Number three, you give warnings. If we, we do not, sorry, if we do not stop open burning, we will face his problem every year. I believe everyone suffers during this terrible period, especially babies and those who are ill. And this is another example of giving warnings. If we purposely violate the Movement Control Order MCO in our country, we will not be able to flatten the coronavirus infection curve. We have to practice social distancing. We should not go out unnecessarily. And this is what I'm doing now. I come here and we are practicing social distancing. The technical personnel are all far away from me. All right? So, uh, this is one of our contribution towards our country to flatten the coronavirus infection curve. Let's do this together. Okay? Number four, give explanations or reasons. We can carry out this activity during the weekend with our friends. It is not going to affect our schooling hours. In fact, we will be able to do better in our lessons. That is, you explain how something is going to be done. You give reasons why it should be done that way. Now, that's number four. Number five, you support with proof and details from news and reports. This incident was reported in the local dailies and it angered the public. They condemned such a despicable act. Okay, support with rule. Where do you get this proof and uh, details? Well, you have to read the newspaper, whether online or, well, the physical newspaper. All right? That is number five. Number six, you support with facts and figures and data. More than 80% of the students are interested to join the program. This will be a success, no doubt. But one thing you have to remember, you just cannot cook up any percent that you want to write there. It's sound, it should sound logical, believable. Right? Okay? And the last one, when all else fails, you are going to use the five W's with the one H. Ask yourself the who, what, where, when, why, and how. That will help you to elaborate on the given point that will help you to give new ideas to write your directed writing question. To answer the question, it should be the use, you should be using uh, these seven ways. Okay? There are seven ways that I have introduced to you. I hope you are going to remember this and you are going to use the, these seven ways for you to write your uh, answer for the directed writing. Maybe when the school reopens, you will have another test. Okay? then you can use the seven ways on how to elaborate and how to give your own ideas. Okay. Alright, people. Please, write clearly and legibly. If the examiner cannot decipher what you have written, he or she will underline the word words. Once there is a word underlined, you are in danger of not getting good marks. Use docking, black or blue-black. Right, so that it uh, what you uh, the, the examiner will be able to read clearly uh, what you have written. 
Okay. You must try your very best to answer section A. The points are already there. All you have to do is write them in complete sentences and elaborate. And also give your own ideas when you are required to do so. Make sure they are logical and sensible. And with moral values as well. You must write a complete sentence, not merely copy the point or the phrase. You won't get one mark for that. If you try hard enough, you will be able to get good marks. It is worth trying. This is going to affect your future. Very sure. Now, let's try. You attended a two-week leadership camp in Sarawak. After the camp, you decided to write an article in a youth magazine to share your experience there. Use the notes given below. These are the points. Made lots of friends, firearms training, marching competition, cultural night, visited orphanage, water sports, jungle trekking, extreme activities, team building and leadership skills, survival skills. When writing the article, you must use all the notes given, give a suitable title, describe how you felt about the whole experience, provide two reasons why students should join the camp. That's the question. All right. Remember, the moment you read the question, you have to identify the format. What is this? The article. You have to write the title and the name of the writer. Good. Correct. Then, the audience. Who will be the audience? Okay. The readers of the magazine. But then you have to remember, not only youth, maybe parents and teachers. Okay. The contents. How many points are given? How many do you have to add? Remember, it says that you are going to give reasons. You are going to give reasons. You are going to give two new points. So, you cannot miss that. And then you have the task. What is the task here? The task here is to share experience and give information. Right? You are going to share your experience there and you want to give information so that other people uh, would like to go to the same camp that you have attended. All right. And the tense, okay? And this is where you have to use all the present, the past, future, continuous, and perfect tenses correctly. Now, the scenario or the subject matter. This is very important. You have to remember, this is a two-week leadership camp in Sarawak. So you cannot talk about three days, two nights. You cannot talk about one month. And... If you are from Perlis, you are going to attend this camp in Sarawak. You cannot say that your father sends you there in his car because you have to take a flight. You have to go to Alusta. Okay? These are the things that make your answer better than those who just write without focusing on F-A-C-T-S. Alright? So, that is the F-A-C-T-S. Okay, now. This is another question. You have just returned from a holiday and it was totally an awful experience. Your parents want you to write a letter to complain about the travel package organized by the local travel agency. The accommodation promised at least four-star hotel but turned out a budget hotel. Paid for three rooms but provided only two. Entrance fees paid for entrance fees to the zoo, museum and national park. Not all inclusive, there were hidden costs. Transportation, shuttle bus always late. Stuffy due to poor ventilation. Tour manager, unable to answer questions about sites visited, constantly on social media, taking his own selfies and phone texting. Food, family members were allergic to seafood, informed earlier, requested gluten-free food but not accommodated. You notice that? The points come with heading, accommodation, entrance fees, transportation, tour manager and food. For every heading, you have two sub points there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Altogether, you have 10 points. Now, identify the F-A-C-T-S. Okay? 
Using the information above, write your letter of complaint. When writing the letter, you must remember to lay out the letter correctly, use all the notes given, suggest two recommendations for the travel agency to take action. You have to add another two. Okay? Alright. So now, let's go. The format. This is a formal letter of complaint where you write the address of the sender, yes, address of the receiver, the date, the salutation, the reference and the ending. Okay. Then, the audience. Who will be reading your letter of complaint? That is the manager of the travel agency. Okay. The contents. Okay. How many points are given? 10. How many do you have to add? 2. Okay. The suggestions, remember? Okay. And what is the task? Your task is to complain. But it doesn't mean that you're going to use foul language. You're going to use harsh words. You're going to complain in a polite manner, in a respected way. Now, the tense. The tense, again, you have to use present, past, future, continuous and perfect tenses all together. Okay? And the scenario or subject matter here, what is, what is it? Yeah, you have to remember, you returned from a holiday. You wrote, okay, on behalf of your parents. You are airing out the grievances of your parents. Okay? All right. All right, this is another one. You are a youth leader in your town. You have been invited by a school counsellor to give a talk to the Form 5 students during co-curricular meeting to encourage them to join a club in your community after their SPM exam to foster better relationship with people outside the school. You decided to introduce two clubs to them namely the social and recreational club and the outdoor lovers club write your talk based on the following notes in your talk you should describe all the details of the two clubs state which club you think is more suitable suggest one benefit students will gain from that club okay so you have to state you have to suggest, okay, this question is based on a table, right? So, you have the information for social and recreational club and also the information for outdoor lovers club. The headings of the uh, information, purpose, meeting day and time, activities, monthly fee. For the social and recreational club, the purpose Members learn how to socialize with others and make new friends. The meetings are on Wednesdays, 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. The activities, birthday celebrations, singing get-togethers, family day, field trips. The monthly fee is 15 Malaysian ringgit. While the Outdoor Lovers Club, members have to, the opportunity to explore, learn and enjoy nature. That is the purpose. The meeting on Fridays, 3 to 4.30 p.m. And activities are jungle trekking, camping trips, fishing. The monthly fee is 25 Malaysian ringgit. You notice that this question comes in the form of a table. So, what you should do is that you should focus on one club first and then go to another one. This will make it easier for the examiner to see that you have attempted all the points given. This is for your own benefit. Alright? Okay? Now, when writing the talk, you must use an appropriate greeting. State the purpose of your talk. Use all the notes given. Give your own ideas when needed. Use an appropriate closing. So, reminder, read the question carefully. Don't jump to conclusion. Pay attention to what you should do. Highlight important words. 
Focus on what you must do. This is where you can determine the format. So, the format is, what is the format here? This is, you are going to give a talk. Who will be your audience? The Form 5 students. Okay? What is your task here? What is your task here? That is, you want to share information with the students. Okay? You want to share information with your students and then, with the students, sorry, they are not your students. Okay? And the subject matter here is that this is a talk given by a youth leader to teenagers. Alright? Do not change that. So, this is where you're going to set the tone of being friendly, okay? not condescending. Okay? And also, you are going to make them see things beyond their classroom. This is what they're going to do after their SPM exam. Okay, now, let's see. Here comes the sample answer. A very good afternoon, I bid to Madam Lily, teachers and Form 5 students of Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Seri Pelangi. That's F1, the greeting. Okay, introduce yourself because you are somewhat outside the school. They don't really know who you are. I am Muhammad Adam Ibrahim, the president of Sejati Youth Society, and I would like to thank the school counsellor for inviting me to share some in information on how you can foster a better relationship with people in the community after you leave school. F2. One mark there. One of the ways is by joining various clubs. So, today I would like to introduce two clubs, namely the Social and Recreational Club and the Outdoor Lovers Club. And later, give my opinion on which club is more suitable for you teenagers. Okay, very friendly, yet very formal. Okay, so uh, this is a young man talking to teenagers. Let's continue. The Social and Recreational Club was established two years ago. Its main aim is to enable the members to learn how to socialize with others and make new friends. You can enhance your communication skills by joining the club which organizes a variety of activities including birthday celebrations, singing get-togethers, family day at exciting places and field trips at least four times a year. Those are the activities. Okay? The members meet every Wednesday at the town hall from 2.30pm to 4pm. The monthly membership fee is 15 Malaysian Ringgit and the advisor is Madam Doreen Silveraj, the well-known social activist in our town. The purple sentence, I'm, the, uh, the sentences in purple colour, alright? These are the points given, okay? Now, done with the social and recreational club. Now, let's go to the outdoor lovers club. The Outdoor Lovers Club, on the other hand, was established seven years ago by a group of adventurous people led by Encik Hafiz Ramli, a retired civil servant who now focuses his, all his time and energy on the club. The club's main purpose is to offer members the opportunity to explore, learn and enjoy nature. Meetings are held every Friday from 3 p.m. until 4.30 p.m. at the clubhouse in Jalan Pelangi 2, Taman Pelangi Indah. It is also one and a half hours like the social and recreational club meetings. Its activities include jungle trekking, camping trips and fishing outings. The membership fee is 25 Malaysian Ringgit per month. Mr. Chia Hong Singh, the person who brought glory to our country many years ago for winning a gold medal in 400 meters hurdles in the SEA Games is the patron of this club. Now, you're done with the Outdoor Lovers Club. Now, after giving it much thought, I believe the Outdoor Lovers Club would be more suitable for teenagers like you. Now, you're telling which one would be a better choice for them. You are young and energetic and this is the time to enjoy adventurous outdoor activities. You do not have many chances to do that often while schooling, right? The trips and outings will give you the opportunity to explore nature. You will be able to experience exciting activities that are not available in the town.
You can go camping, learn how to pitch a tent, and learn how to fish in the river rather than at the pond. Though the membership fee is slightly higher than the other club, it is to support the activities that will be fun and challenging, no doubt. So now you are giving the preference. Which one do you prefer? Okay, now you're talking about the benefit. The main benefit of joining the Outdoor Lovers Club is you will always stay fit and active. This, in turn, will improve your stamina and physical endurance as well as keep you strong and healthy. It will do good to your great sorry, it will do good to your general health and mental concentration once you go to further your studies at tertiary level next year. Remember the golden adage, health is wealth? At the same time, you will be able to enhance your knowledge on natural surroundings. Most of us live in the concrete jungle and in my opinion, it would be wonderful to sleep in a tent in the green forest full of trees. Well, I hope I've shared enough details about both clubs. Thank you for listening and do give a thought before signing up. I would like to end my talk with my favorite quote by Franz Kafka. Youth is happy because it has the capacity to see beauty. Anyone who keeps the ability to see beauty never grows old. Have a nice day ahead, everyone. Okay, that is format number three, the ending. How you end your talk. Now, here's another example. You attended a leadership camp organized by the State Education Department. At the camp, one of the participants from another school was awarded the most promising leader. You decided to write an article about the participant for your school magazine. Use the notes below to write your article. The notes come in the form of a diagram. The participant details, reasons why participant was chosen, awards received. For the details, you have the name, age, school, ambition, hobbies, family, background. Reasons, you're responsible, voted the most helpful, caring, and what's certificate of achievement, uh, RM800, and also a trophy. So, when writing the article, you should remember to give a suitable title, give your name as the writer, use all the notes given, add one new point to highlight the participant's charisma as a leader. Give your own ideas when needed. Note, for your article, you will receive up to 15 marks for the format and content points and up to 20 marks for the quality of writing. The Most Promising Leader by Nelly Fernandez a leader is someone respected by many people. It is not easy to earn respect, especially from one's peers. Recently, at the leadership camp organized by State Education Department, Aisyah Khadijah binti Muhammad Noor, a prefect from Sekolah Menengah Sri Pelangi, was chosen as the most promising leader. Her ambition is to become a marine biologist as she loves the ocean and marine life. It is not surprising to know that she always scores the highest marks in biology in every exam in her school. She even took part in national level biology quiz and was the first runner up. During her free time, Aisha likes to paint and play hockey. She is the captain of her school's hockey team and she is a very skilled midfielder. She started playing hockey when she was in Form 1. Aisha, who is going to be 17 in November, is the eldest in her family. She has a younger brother who is in Form 1 and her younger sister is in Year 4. Her parents own a small cafe in town. In our town, she usually helps out during weekends and school holidays as her parents cannot afford to hire many workers. I was amazed when she told me she knows how to cook numerous local and western dishes. At the camp, we were divided into five teams of ten members and we had to participate in several activities. Aisha was the group leader for Team Delta. I was one of the group members. She was a very responsible leader who motivated us to give our very best and took on extra work whenever necessary. She divided the duties fairly and discussed with the rest of us on how to carry out our task. Aisha listened to our suggestions and planned everything meticulously. She was a caring leader who was able to cheer up one of our teammates who was very upset because she, we lost in one of the competitions. Her comforting words and advice really made our friend happy again. 
she was also voted the most helpful at the camp who not only helped her own team members but also the members of other teams. She helped a girl who was injured during jungle trekking by making a crash using a branch. The most exciting event at the camp was the, for the participants to perform during cultural night. We were given only one day to practice and we had to compete with the other four teams. All the group leaders and their team members worked hard to give a memorable performance, but Aisha really stood out. She suggested that we act out a short play which was the plot twist of the famous story Cinderella. She volunteered to be the director and I was chosen as the hero. In our play, the main character was a male young nerd who was bullied by his stepmother and two stepbrothers, but he finally married a princess. Everybody enjoyed our play and we won the Best Performance Award. For her excellent performance at the camp, she was given the Most Promising Leader Award. She received a Certificate of Achievement, a Handsome Trophy and Malay RM 800, 800 Malaysian Ringgit from the Director of the Education Department. Aisha Khadijah binti Muhammad Noor is an exemplary leader with great qualities and a bright future ahead. Okay, I've given you two examples. Okay, I've given you two examples. And before I end, I would like to share this uh, wonderful uh, picture uh, which I have been keeping for many, many years. It says, eight to be great. The first one is that to be great, you must have patience. You must have patience for what you're doing. Right now, you must have patience for studying. All right? Then you must work. It means that you have to work hard for it. You just cannot play around hanging around doing nothing and you have to focus if you do not focus whether in class at home or when you are doing your vision you're not going to be great and you have to push yourself you're sleepy you are going to uh, stand up go for a walk for two minutes drink a glass of water and continue push yourself and you have got to look for ideas how to make things easier for you all right maybe you are going to have uh, uh, mind maps small notes Okay, and you have to improve. You have to tell yourself to do better every time. Okay, uh, if in the first test uh, you got only 45 marks, then the next one you should get at least 50. You have to serve. Help your friends. Share with them what you have. Okay, and you have to persist. Never, ever give up. You have there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ways to be great. Eight to be great. And this is another reminder. Stop talking about the past. You don't live there anymore. If it was good, take it as an inspiration. It might be a soul booster. If it was bad, take it as a lesson. It surely serves as a bitter reminder. But you must move forward. Life goes on. Okay, that's a reminder from me. All right, class. Ponder on this. Where we come from is not as important as where we are going. All the best and may the Almighty bless each and every one of you always. Thank you and all the best. Stay at home. MCO.